August seems to be a pretty exciting month for sneaker releases, so it's time for double up, buy once or pass. And the concept is simple, if I love a shoe, I'll give it a double up. If I like but don't love a shoe, I give it a buy once and pass. That's self-explanatory. Now disclaimer, I couldn't get every single release in August. One, because there's just too many, this video would be two hours long. And two, sneaker release dates always changes, there's bound to be shoes that prop up at the very last minute or some shoes that get delayed and pushed back into September or later in this year. Most of the shoes have confirmed release dates, and if they don't, blame the sneaker company, not me. Here we go. First up on August 1 is the Air Jordan 2 Crystal Mint Women's Exclusive for $175. Now according to sneakers, this shoe is paying tribute to the basketball players, the emerging basketball players in New York City, as well as the iconic Statue of Liberty. So you see on the tongue of the shoe, the Wings logo comes in this marbled aesthetic. And then you also have the touches of bronze on the tongue, the insoles, as well as the booty of the shoe and the eyelet. Now like most Jordan 2s, this comes with a predominantly white base leather layer with hints of that mint green throughout. And it also comes with a sail midsole. And again, I know they're trying to age this shoe a little bit, especially if they're trying to pay tribute to the Statue of Liberty as well as New York City but I just think that sale midsole doesn't go too well with the rest of the shoe. Now while I think the marbled aesthetic on the Wings logo on the tongue of the shoe it's a pretty cool look however that mint green just not a big fan of. And on top of that I just think there's better Jordan 2s that are coming up specifically the Jordan 2 Black Cement. I think that's dropping in September. I really like the look of that shoe so for those reasons I'm gonna give this shoe a pass. Also dropping on August 1st is the Nike Zoom Vermeero 5 for $175. The Vermeero 5 has obviously been out for a while, first released in 2011. However, a decade later, who would have guessed it? The running shoe, dad shoe is having its moment, so it's really really revitalized the silhouette. The Vermeeros couldn't be more popular. And this shoe features a mesh based layer with suede eye stays, and apparently part of the outsole is glow in the dark according to sneakers. And it also has Seoul inspired insoles. And Seoul is in like the city in South Korea. I'm not sure what the connection is, but it has that. It says it on Nike.com, so if you don't believe me, check it out yourself. And I really like this colorway, this white, black, gray colorway. It's just really easy to wear. It's right up my alley. However, I've never really gotten into the whole running shoe, dad shoe thing. I still just think it looks too much like a running shoe for me to wear it casually. Don't go for runs, I barely even go for walks. I really only exercise if I'm at the gym or like in the context of a sport. Anything else, I'm good. But I will say there's something about the simplicity of this colorway that's kind of appealing to me. So I might get this shoe just to review and I might actually really like it. So I'm gonna give this shoe a buy once. Next up for $140 is the Arma Manier Jordan Airship. Now this is a part of a larger collection for Arma Manier that's dropping on August 3rd. And like always, like with most of their collaborations with Jordan Brand, there's always like an accompanying video. The storytelling is just so in-depth and so creative. The video is on their website if you're interested in checking it out along with a bunch of other clothing that goes along with the release of the shoe. Now this isn't the first Jordan airship that Arma Manier has collaborated on. They also had the Royal Blue airships that came out or was that the last year or a few years ago? I can't remember. But this shoe, this colorway, as simple as it is, it is nice. I love the look of this shoe. Now this shoe comes with an all leather upper sole with a pre-aged midsole. I don't love the pre-aged midsole, but it does tend to be a pattern for Arma Mane collaborations. So I kind of expected this and I just love how clean it looks. Black and white, as simple as it gets. Originally, before I actually owned a pair of airships, from images, I didn't really love the shoe. But when I got my first pair, the Airship Every Game Dune Red, in hand, the Airships are nice. There's something about the simplicity and just how easy it is that just really, really appeals to me. And what I love about this shoe is it's just leather, nothing else, very simple, just like the colors on the shoe. That's it, one material to rule them all. Love it. Now I think on Amar Manier's website, as well as social status and avpstore.com, they're all holding raffles. Obviously, all of them are owned by one owner, James Whitner who's absolutely killing it. So if you want the shoe, definitely enter in multiple raffles if you can. So if you couldn't tell by now, I'm definitely giving this shoe a double up. Next up, dropping on August 3rd for $190 is the Air Jordan 5 Low Dongdan. Now this shoe is a tribute to the streetball tournament that's held in Dongdan, Beijing every year. It's called Sunday Sunset. 
And Dongdan Basketball Court is essentially the Rucker Park of Beijing. It's where a lot of hoopers go, show off their skills, and compete. Now this Jordan 5 Low features an Onubak upper sole with pink shark teeth, as well as translucent pink outsoles. And you also see the stitching comes in the same pink. The logos on the booty of this shoe is also branded. It actually says Dongdan in Chinese characters, but it incorporates the use of two basketballs for each of the characters. I think that's pretty creative. And the tag on the inside of the Jordan 5 Low, like many other Jordan 5 Lows, is upside down. And if you didn't know, Jordan Brand originally did that because people back in the 80s, I think early 90s, they would flip their tongue like outwards so you could see the writing on the inside of the tongue. So they put it upside down on purpose in anticipation of people flipping it out so people could read it like the right side up. The insoles are also unique, comes in that kind of marble distress pattern. And of course, a regular 3M tongue for the Jordan 5 Low. Now apparently, according to Nike.com, it comes with a special hang tag. I can't see it, the photos don't show any hand tags. But if you get the shoe, make sure Jordan brand is staying true to their word. Now Jordan 5s are my favorite Jordan shoe, not only in terms of the aesthetic, but also in terms of comfort. However, the Jordan 5 Low, just not as good as the regular Jordan 5s. And I don't really love that pink stitching. I think it's kind of an eyesore. I probably would have preferred like an all black Nubuck upper sole. So for that reason, I'm gonna give this shoe a pass. Next up, also dropping on August 3rd, is the Nike Sabrina 1 Ionic for $125. Now you may have seen Sabrina Ionescu's name pop up a lot recently, even if you don't follow the WNBA. She actually just competed in the WNBA 3-point contest and she only missed two shots, which apparently broke the WNBA and NBA record. Now I know a lot of people say the WNBA basketball is smaller than the men's, the 3-point line is also closer to the rim. All of that is true. But if you see the news and you see the video of her doing this and your first instinct is to find ways to just downplay what she did, you're just a certified hater. I know people that can't make 30 layups in a row. If you've ever been to like an NBA game or watched it on TV and during halftime shows they'll have like those contests where people have to hit shots from different points under the basket and then like the free throw line and then the elbows and then eventually the three point line. Generally people suck at those. So for her to only miss two shots out of 30 something, I can't remember what the actual total was. It's impressive nonetheless. Anyway, Sabrina is one of the best players in the WNBA and she comes from a Romanian American background. So this shoe is also inspired by her Romanian heritage. So you see on the mudguard, the forefoot of the mudguard, as well as the ice days. That is a reference to her Romanian heritage. And this shoe also comes with a zoom air in the forefoot and a full length Nike React foam. Now, if you didn't know, React is essentially a type of foam by Nike, and it's supposed to be very lightweight, super durable, super responsive, and soft. This shoe also comes with a very cool box with a cool message on the inside of the box, and the words anytime, anywhere, printed very subtly on the midfoot. I love that. It's like hidden in there, not too loud, but it's definitely there. Now, what I really love about this shoe is the outsole, and there's that one strip down the middle. I love how that looks. I think that's very unique. And you also see Sabrina's logo on the insole as well as the tongue. I will say, I think they could have done more to make her logo a bit more creative. Kind of reminds me of like a Sports Illustrated S. Just not my favorite, but who am I to judge? And on the booty of the shoe, you see her signature that's imprinted. I really like that. And that strip also leads down to that strip that you see on the outsole that I mentioned before. Now I will say this shoe, the Sabrina 1, I think it's actually one of the best looking basketball sneakers out right now or at least about to be out. It really is. I think it's simple, it's clean. I think it's better than like Giannis's signature shoe. Sorry Giannis, but it just is what it is. I'm definitely looking forward to this shoe. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a buy once. Also dropping on August 3rd is the Jordan Luca 2 Matador for $140. Now in the past, Luca's Matador shoes were predominantly red. This year, they opted to go with more of a teal color. And that is a tribute to Real Madrid's basketball team. That's the team that he made his professional debut at the age of 16. And they have teal in the uniforms. And you see on the upper sole, it is all teal. That's a lot of teal. Now the Luca 2 features an ISO plate support and you'll see that come up on the lateral sides of the shoe. And it also features Formula 23 cushioning and then also a semi-translucent outsole. Really like how that looks. I'm honestly just a sucker for translucent outsoles. I can't help it. And then on the upper sole, it is a mainly mesh based layer with some suede overlays. And on the booty of the shoe, there's a Latin phrase. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it, but it means never give up, never surrender. And it's also tattooed on Luca's arm. Now generally, I like the color of the shoe. I think it's pretty unique. 
I like the gold accents that you see on the tongue. However, the silhouette of the shoe, I'm just not a huge fan of. I think there's better looking basketball shoes, like the KD-16s that's about to come out, as well as the Ionic 1 that I just referred to earlier. I think those are better options. So I'm gonna give this shoe a pass. Next up, dropping on August 4th for $140 is the Air Jordan 1 Low OG Black Toe. Now I think this is probably one of the top two or three releases of August. I've actually already reviewed this shoe. In fact, it's my most recent video. If you're interested in a detailed review, just go check out that video. But I'll quickly sum it up. The materials on this shoe, super soft, especially the overlays. The black overlays are just so soft that I'm just not used to it. It's so nice. In terms of the colorway, obviously using Chicago Bulls colors, red, white, and black. You cannot go wrong with those colors especially on a Jordan 1. Again, like I said, if you're interested to know my thoughts on that shoe, including materials, quality, size and comfort, on feet, extra laces, go check out my most recent video and the review. But if you choose not to, just know that I love that shoe and I'm gonna give it a double up. Next up, also dropping on August 4th, is the Puma Stewie 2 Water that's dropping for $125. And it is WNBA star Brianna Stewart's second signature shoe from Puma. Now her line is kind of playing into the elements like earth, wind, fire, and water. Her first element was the Puma Suey 2. And this time it's water. And according to Puma.com, it's inspired by her fluidity and dynamism as she flows effortlessly between shots, assists, and defenders. So you see on this upper sole, instead of like water, I feel like it's more like crashing waves. It just looks more aggressive than just water. Now Stewie 2 features Puma's power tape reinforcements. So the white pattern that you see on the upper sole, that's what it is. It's supposed to increase durability and support. And it also features Puma's nitro infused midsole. So essentially the midsole is injected with nitrogen gas mixture. So it's to keep the shoe very lightweight, but responsive and provides really, really good cushioning. Now I really, really like the outsole of this shoe. I think it's got a very cool pattern and it doesn't seem to prioritize like aesthetics over performance on the traction. So I really like that. The back of the shoe, where you also see two warning messages. Love that, it's the little details that count. I will admit, I don't think I own any Puma shoes in my current rotation at least. So with that said, I like the look of the shoe. I like the materials and technology that's listed. So I'm gonna give this shoe a buy once. Next up, dropping on August 5th for $210, is the Air Jordan 13 Wolf Grey. Now, just like the Air Jordan 1 Low OG Black Toe, I've actually already reviewed this shoe. You can go check out my review of the Jordan 13 Wolf Grey. But quickly to summarize, the Jordan 13, one of the best and most comfortable Jordans, at least from Jordan 1 to 14. I really like the comfort of the 13s. Don't really love the silhouette, but I do think this colorway is super clean and super simple. One thing that I don't like about this shoe in particular is I think they overdid the tumbled leather. It's just, is so much that it looks artificial. It doesn't look that great. But again, if you wanna know more, if you wanna know my detailed thoughts on feet, all that good stuff, check out my review of the Jordan 13 Wolf Grey. But if you choose not to watch it because you hate me and you don't wanna give me that extra view, I'm gonna give you a preview. I really like the colorway. I think it's just so clean. It's right up my alley. It's still a comfortable shoe. So I'm gonna give this shoe a buy once. Also dropping on August 5th is the Nike SB Dunk Low Crenshaw Skate Club. Now this shoe is probably one of the most hyped sneakers on this list because just look at it. Look how sick it looks. I love it. I'm not even a huge Dunks person, but oof. Now Toby McIntosh, who is the founder of Crenshaw Skate Club, he previously collaborated with Jordan Brand on the Jordan 36 Low Toby Player Exclusive. I think the Jordan 36s are actually one of the better modern day Jordan Brand shoes. Now there's a ton of details on this shoe. You see the Crenshaw Skate Club logo on the tongue as well as the insoles and the booty of the shoe. And then also my favorite, I see outsoles with clip art graphics and you see palm trees that's inspired by Los Angeles. And then on the upper sole, it is a smooth suede base layer with like cracked leather overlays that's like in that distressed pattern and red and green. I don't know what to call that pattern. It looks nice, whatever the pattern's called, I like it. I really am just a sucker for good storytelling on collaborations and I think Toby and his team did a great job in this shoe. It looks nice, it looks wearable, it looks unique, and it also tells the story. My favorite thing about this shoe is just probably the insoles. I just love the way it's done. Unfortunately, I think this is one of those shoes that happens once every month. It's one of those shoes that might break the internet, so I think it's gonna be very hard to get, but in a perfect world, I'm definitely giving this a double up. 
Next up, on August 8th, another zoom from Mirror 5. This time it's the Team Red and Pink Foam for $160. Now pink recently is a very very popular colorway owing to the movie Barbie of course. Recently we've seen the hot pink Barbie inspired Vomero 5s and the have a Nike day Vomeros. This particular colorway reminds me of like the MX Bacons as well as the Valentine's Day collection. But unlike the light bone and black Vomero 5 that I mentioned earlier in this video, the insoles pays tribute to Bill Bowerman who is obviously a co-founder of Nike. So slightly different insoles, same shoe, different color of course. And in general, I don't love this colorway it's a bit too much for me. I think it's a nice looking shoe, but probably just not my thing. So for that reason, I'm going to give this shoe a pass. Also dropping on August 8th is a pair of Air Alpha Force 88s, this time in collaboration with Billie Eilish. And it comes in a black and white colorway as well as the Chicago colorway for $130. Now Billie Eilish has done a few Nike collaborations before. It completely escapes me what shoes that she did it for. But she definitely has collaborated with Nike before. And if you didn't know, the Air Alpha Force 88 is a shoe that Michael Jordan actually wore on feet in a game in January 1988, hence the name. The reason for him wearing that shoe, I think it's still unclear. Nobody knows why, why he put them on. However, it's become this shoe that's kind of got this shroud of mystery. The Air Alpha Force Chicago actually came out recently, so no collaboration. But this shoe, because it's a collaboration, of course there's going to be some branding. So you see a few changes on the tongue instead of Air Force that comes with the normal Air Alpha Force 88s. It says AAF 88 Force. And on the insole, it also has Billie Eilish branding. And apparently the bag and the box that comes with the shoe is special to Billie Eilish as well. So if you're a fan, definitely keep your eyes on these shoes. I think the Air Alpha Force 88 is a nice shoe. That strap always reminds me of an Air Trainer 1, which I really, really love. But I'm not really a fan of Billie Eilish. I don't really listen to her music. I know nothing about her. So I prefer the non-collab version of the Chicago colorway. So I'm going to give these shoes a pass. Dropping on August 9th is the Nike KD3 Easy Money for $130. Now next year, 2024, looks to be a pretty good year for Kevin Durant's signature shoes. They're bringing the KD16 Art Pearl, they're bringing back the KD4 Weatherman. But for this month, they're giving us the KD3 Easy Money that's inspired by Kevin Durant's time with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And you see the upper sole of the shoe comes in this, I don't even know what to call that color. The official colors on the shoe are light silver, blue j steam mineral, and spruce metallic copper. So there it is. Those are the colors. Now there's a few references to Kevin Durant's Easy Money nickname. You'll see it on the insole as well as a hundred all over the swoosh. And then on the booty of the shoe, it's also very unique with the letters KD35 and that diamond shape. And lastly, that also features glow-in-the-dark outsoles. I don't love glow-in-the-dark outsoles, but I don't hate them. It's just like a thing. I don't really care about it. But if you're into that, there you go. I think after Jordan Shoes and Kobe Bryant's signature line, the KD signature line is probably the closest shoe that can like cross over into the mainstream. So if you don't care about basketball shoes, but you see a pair of like KD 3s, 4s, 16s, whatever, I can actually see a lot of people going, I can wear them casually. And I love the colors on the shoe, the details, the storytelling. I love Kevin Durant. I'm definitely giving this shoe a double up. Next up, dropping on August 10th, is the Air Flight Hirachi Black and Varsity Purple or Kobe Player Exclusive or Lakers Away or all of them and that's dropping for $125. Now I've actually got a review coming up it'll drop it's probably the next video after this or the video after that you can see it right here very excited now this shoe is a Kobe Bryant Player Exclusive originally in 2002-2003 it was a sneaker free agent, he just left Adidas, but until the end of 2023, he wasn't allowed to officially sign with another company. So during this time, he wore a bunch of different shoes. He actually wore shoes like the Question Mid Yellow Toe. I actually have a pair of those up there. And one of them was this shoe, the Air Flight Hirachis and the Lakers Away colorway. And this shoe features an all new buck upper sole with a very distinct TPU chassis, as well as the neoprene material to really lock your feet in place. Now if you've seen my review on the f Light Hirachis, the OG colorway, I really really like the comfort of the shoe. I really like how it looks. I think it's very distinct but still very versatile. And I'm a huge fan of Kobe Bryant. I'll have more to say on the shoe and my detailed review that's coming very soon. But to give you a quick preview, I'm definitely giving this shoe a buy once. Next up, dropping on August 10th for $150 is the Air Jordan 2 Low Varsity Royal. 
And now I believe the shoe already dropped at select retailers like three or four weeks ago. I actually already have them in hand. So again, I'll have more to say on the shoe and that review. But a quick summary, the shoe features an all white leather base layer, just like other Jordan 2 lows. And that Varsity Royal Blue obviously is one of the best colors on Jordan shoes. But something about this color on the Jordan 2 lows just doesn't feel quite right. And on top of that, I don't love that sale muslin midsole. I just think it looks so out of place. I don't love it. So even though I do have the shoe, I was going to review it. It's kind of slipped my mind with all the other shoes I reviewed, but I will do an in-depth review of that shoe. However, just looking at the colorway, just looking at the shoe in person, that midsole just, I don't know, it just kind of ruins it for me. I'm giving the shoe a pass. Also dropping on August 10th for $150 is another Jordan 2 Low. And this time, it's the Jordan 2 Low Sky J Orange. And this shoe kind of reminds me of the Jordan 2 Low 218 that dropped last year. Very, very similar vibe, very, very similar colors. And this shoe specifically features a nubuck and suede upper sole. And that sky orange color. I actually really like that color. I think it's very, very unique. And the TPU heel counter comes in that light purple, almost sunset type of color. But again, comes with a sale midsole. I think if they went with a white midsole, that would actually make the shoe pop a little bit more. It would just separate or be a bit more contrasting to the rest of the upper sole. They couldn't help themselves, they had to put sale on the shoe. So with that said, I'm giving this shoe a pass. Next up on August 10th for $120 is the Jordan Tatum 1 Denim. Now the Tatum 1 has been out for a while now. I didn't really like any of the initial colorways. So like the Tatum 1 Zoo, Barbershop, there was the St. Louis one. Didn't really appeal to me. But this denim colorway, I don't really like denim on shoes generally. But this colorway, the way it's done, I really like it. So this shoe features a washed denim look on the heel counter as well as the eye stays. And that washed aesthetic just looks really, really nice. It's my favorite part about this shoe. I love it. Now the Tatum 1 features a zoom air unit on the forefoot with a strong mesh upper sole. And you see inside the tongue, it also pays tribute to a Sun Deuce. But a few pet peeves I have with the Tatum 1s. The TPU chassis, I feel like it's just too prominent on the shoe. I get it's for durability, it's for support. However, in terms of aesthetics, I just don't really love it. And another thing is, I just don't love Jason Tatum's logo. It kind of looks like something I could design. And that's bad news. I am not a designer. And if I can do it, it's definitely too simple. They could have done more. But with that said, I've passed on so many Tatum 1s. This colorway is the best one yet, so I'm gonna give this shoe a buy once. Next up on August 11th is the Union LA Beffy Supply Air Jordan 1 High OG that's dropping for $200. Now the release date on this, I think it's still unconfirmed, so it might not actually drop on August 11th. Who knows, I'm assuming it will for the sake of this video. But this shoe is a three-way collaboration with Union LA, Jordan Brand, and Beffy's Beauty Supply. Now the owner of Beffy Beauty Supply is Beth Kerbett, who is actually married to the owner of Union LA, Chris Gibbs. So that makes the collaboration a lot easier. And anytime a Jordan 1 Union LA comes out, it'll get people's attention. There's two of the Union LA Jordan 1s, many people consider grails. I think those are two of the best collaborations ever. It's so nice. But this shoe, it's definitely more divisive. And this shoe features a very unique looking woven material on the upper sole with hints of that mint green turquoise stitching right under the Union LA tag that you see right under the ankle collar. And it also features a pre-aged midsole and a sale pale vanilla color. Now a lot of people didn't like this shoe, it was kind of too weird for them, but I definitely really liked this shoe as soon as images came out. I thought the woven material was super unique, it wasn't like so different that it was ugly. I still felt like it was a very good looking shoe. If I had to complain about one thing, it's probably that sale pale vanilla color on the midsole, but with the rest of the shoe, it actually doesn't look too bad. Now I can already start to see people convincing themselves, people that originally hated the shoe, convincing themselves that they like it. And now for my benefit, I hope they go back to hating the shoe because I really like the shoe from like day one. I really want to get this shoe very easily. So definitely for this shoe, I'm gonna give it a double up. Next up on August 12th is the Air Jordan 5 Burgundy that's dropping for $225. Just saying this up front, this is definitely my favorite shoe on the list. The Jordan 5 is my favorite shoe and in this color, it's so nice. Now the Jordan 5 Burgundy first released in 2006 and it features a full suede upper sole with of course 3M reflective tongues and you see that silver metallic shark teeth. 
with the great translucent outsoles. I believe the Jordan 5 was the first Jordan shoe to use IC translucent outsoles. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but off the top of my head, pretty sure it is. This burgundy, when you put it on a shoe like the Jordan 5s, it just elevates it. There's something just so premium and luxurious feeling about this shoe. And you see that reflected on the price point. It's more like an Arma Manea shoe that's $225. Usually for Arma Manea collaborations, they raise the price point just so slightly. So for this shoe, even though it's not a collaboration, I am going to expect better materials, the best materials that they can come with. So if you couldn't tell, if you couldn't guess, I'm definitely giving this shoe a double up, double up, double up. Next up on August 12th for $160 is the Nike KD16 New York vs New York. Now NY vs NY is a Nike basketball tournament for high schoolers and this all red upper sole is a tribute to New York City nicknamed the Big Apple and there's a bunch of references to NY vs NY on the shoe including the jeweled tongues as well as the insole and the KD16 is also Kevin Durant's newer signature shoe and it features Zoom Air and a TPU chassis and you can see that on the lateral side of the shoe and on the booty of the shoe you see that easy kind of medallion thing surrounded by gold swooshes I really really love how that looks, how the gold swooshes kind of enclose the words easy. Love it. But my absolute favorite thing about this shoe is the outsole. It looks like machine cogs and it looks like the traction is also going to really perform. I have a pair of these on the way so I'm going to review it at some point. But in general, I like the look of the KD16s. I think it doesn't deviate too much from the KD15s and I like the KD15s. I have one pair of those and as a big fan of New York City, I'm going to give this shoe a buy once. Also dropping on August 12th is the Jordan 12 Field Purple for $200. Now August 24th is Mamba Day, but the month of August, it might as well be Kobe Bryant's month. This shoe comes with Lakers colors, even though Nike.com doesn't mention the Lakers at all, but it's just very, very obvious. Like a lot of other Jordan 12s, it features an all leather upper sole with faux lizard skin on the mudguard and purple, and you see the hints of Lakers gold on the eyelets, as well as the gold carbon fiber shank plate that you see on the outsole. And that's all there really is to say. The Jordan 12s are a pretty good shoe in terms of performance. It features a Phylon midsole, it features carbon fiber shank plate like I mentioned before. Super durable, but it's not one of my favorite silhouettes. I only get Jordan 12s when it's like a very very nice colorway that I love. And even though I'm a huge fan of Kobe Bryant, I just don't love the silhouette. I also happen to live in Boston, so being caught wearing a Lakers colorway in Boston, walking a fine line there. This is unlike the Air Flight Hirachi Kobe PEs that I mentioned earlier in this video. That shoe, like the Air Flight Hirachi, I really love. I'm willing to risk it walking around in Boston in that colorway, but I don't love the Jordan 12s that much. So for this shoe, I'm gonna give it a pass. Next up on August 18th is the Simpsons Adidas Stan Smith Homer Simpson that's dropping for $130. Now this is one of the absolute best internet memes over the past two decades, ever since memes were around really, and it features Homer Simpson slowly retracting into the bushes. Now fun fact, this meme is actually from season 5 episode 16 that came out in 1994. Thank GQ.com for doing that research. The name of the episode was Homer Loves Flanders. The scene that made that meme famous was Flanders invites Homer to his house and you see Homer slowly retracting into the bushes. Just such a versatile meme. It's Perfect. You can use it for so many different occasions. Now Adidas is taking advantage of their virality and they're going to put it on the shoe. And this shoe has been teased and seen since like September last year. So it's been nearly a whole year. It's finally coming out. And apart from like just the funniness of the shoe, it's a very clean shoe. The Stan Smith, arguably the most famous Adidas shoe ever. And this shoe features an all white upper sole with Homer Simpson's face on the tag on the tongue. The insole of the shoe also features that very famous Simpsons logo as well as that exact meme on the booty of the shoe and you also see the words Homer Simpson in gold on the lateral side of the shoe and of course like a lot of other shoes nowadays it comes with a pre-age sale midsole. Don't get it. Now I'm not someone that actually loves the Stan Smith silhouette but how can you pass on this shoe? Everybody loves the Simpsons. I get it just to collect just to have it in my house. So for this shoe I'm going to give it a buy once. Next up, rumored to be dropping on August 19th, I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but it's the Terra Squad Nike Air Force One coming in the white porpoise colorway as well as the black and white colorway. Now for people that are too young, one of the earliest viral sneaker moments in history 
was Fat Joe licking a pair of original Deadstock Jordan 7 Olympics on an episode of MTV Cribs. If you haven't seen it, YouTube it, I think it's still up. Now Fat Joe might not be like the most relevant rapper nowadays, but he is still a very OG celebrity sneaker collector. And in the past, he has had Terror Squad Air Force Ones before. Those were generally limited to friends and family, so it was very, very hard to get. But for these two shoes, it seems to be a general release, so the public will have a chance to get them. Now Fat Joe kind of recreated this viral moment, but with Eli Manning on an episode of the Eli Manning Show. Eli Manning was the one licking the shoe this time, and he was licking the light porpoise pair. So this white porpoise pair has icy outsoles, on a white leather base layer and the rest of the shoe is pretty normal just like a regular Air Force One with that light porpoise color on the heel counter as well as the swoosh. Now the black and white pair, probably the pair most people are going to try and get. That's pretty much just a regular black and white Air Force One but both these shoes comes with Terror Squad branding on the heel counter as well as the characters JC, probably referencing Joey Crack. That's like Fat Joe's other persona, kind of like Eminem, Slim Shady. Now out of these two shoes, I probably actually like that light porpoise pair more. I don't know, I think the color blocking is just better. Now in a vacuum, these two shoes aren't the best. There's nothing too special about them apart from like the Terror Squad logos, as well as the characters JC on the heel. But if you're around my age, you grew up in the 90s, and if you grew up in that era of hip hop when Fat Joe was huge at one point with the song Lean Back, you gotta get these shoes. Fat Joe is just such a name in sneaker collecting. He really is. So for these reasons, because I am someone of that era, I grew up during that time, I'm gonna give these shoes a buy once. Now on August 24th, on Mamba Day, is the Kobe 8 Pro Tro Triple White that's dropping for $180. Now the Kobe 8 originally released in 2012, and it's just one of the best basketball sneakers. Now Pro Tro stands for Performance Retro, so they've upgraded the tech specs of the shoe to be more in line with modern day basketball shoes. So this shoe features a full length zoom strobel unit. And this shoe obviously comes in kind of different shades of white. It features Kobe's signature on the heel counter, also has a black carbon fiber shank plate. One of my favorite things on sneakers is carbon fiber. Now I missed out on the Kobe 4 Pro Tro, the one that dropped on Gigi's birthday earlier this year. Very upset about that. It's just too expensive to go through the resale market for that shoe. So I really, really want this shoe. And yeah, it doesn't get more cleaner than this shoe. I love it. And as a huge Kobe Bryant fan, I'm definitely giving this shoe a double up. Next up on August 25th for $140 is the Jordan 1 Low OG Atmosphere Grey or Stealth, whatever name you prefer. Now this shoe looks very similar to the Jordan 1 Stealth that came out last year. However, instead of just an all leather upper sole, it features a suede toe box and heel counter. Now one of the best things about the Jordan 1 High Stealth is that this shoe actually came with really nice leather, especially for a Jordan 1. I was really impressed. The leather is just so soft on the shoe, especially the toe box. So I would have preferred this low OG Atmosphere Grey come with an all leather upper sole. I really wish they just recreated this shoe, but in a low version. And unlike the Jordan 1 High Stealth, they went with a sailed midsole instead of a white midsole for absolutely no reason. I think while this shoe is nice, but because I have the Jordan 1 High Stealth, it's hard not to compare. I'm gonna have to give this shoe a pass. Also dropping on August 25th is the Air Jordan 38 Fundamental for $200. The newest Jordan brand shoe is here, and while nothing will ever compare to the Jordan 1 to 14, what people consider the golden era, I do think the 38 is one of the better modern day releases. The more I look at the shoe, the more I like it. Now this shoe specifically has a lot of references to the 30th anniversary of the Jordan 8. Also the 30th anniversary of the 1993 Chicago Bulls Championship. So the Jordan 38 introduces the X plate. You'll see that X on the outsole. And that allows for stability when players cut, stop and go. And it's also a nod to the Jordan 8, like I referred to earlier. The Jordan 8 had that X strap, so they made it in the same shape. And you see on the herringbone traction on the outsole, you see that X as well. It also has 41 cross hatches, and that is a tribute to the 41 points he dropped in a 1993 finals game. And you also see a championship ring on the inside of the tongue, as well as three diamonds on the medial side of the shoe, and that's supposed to represent the third consecutive championship ring for the Chicago Bulls in 1993. That was an absolute mouthful. And if you haven't seen the 1993 finals, it was a super fun series. It was against the Charles Barkley led Phoenix Suns. Highly recommend you go back and watch those games. On top of all that, this is also the most sustainable shoe that Jordan Brand has ever made. And obviously as a huge Jordan Brand fan, there's obviously been a ton of duds lately. A 
of this shoe, just the more I look at it. I reiterate, the more I look at it, the more I like it. So with that said, I'm gonna give this shoe a buy once. Next up, on August 26th, for $200, is the Air Jordan 4 Frozen Moments. And that's a woman's exclusive. Now according to Nike.com, their official press release, this shoe is to celebrate the immortalization of woman's statues, which is likely why this is called Frozen Moments and likely why this is a woman's exclusive. However, I've seen articles that say this shoe was inspired by a TV ad from 1997. That ad featured moments from Michael Jordan's playing career. I don't know what's the true story. I'm going with Nike.com's official story. It doesn't have any mention of that TV ad, but whatever. Now this shoe features a suede base layer with leather overlays and that icy gray whitish colorway. I think it's a very, very nice colorway. It's very simple. I think it's very easy to wear. I really like that metallic colored wings. I think it gives it a nice pop. But again, like so many shoes on this list, they went with a sale midsole. I don't know why. If you free something, I guess you kind of age it. So maybe the midsole turns sale, going by that logic. Maybe that makes sense. I think it would have been better with a white midsole. However, the Jordan 4s are just so nice. I really like this colorway. I think it's very, very unique. Very easy to wear for me personally. I'm gonna give this shoe a double up. So that's it. Thanks for watching Soul Inclined. Let me know what shoes you think you would double up on and what shoes you think are just plain old trash. Like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. And remember, tomorrow may never come, so wear your shoes.